This is the EGC 20k Age of Empires 4 tournament. The quarterfinals are on, the last eight generals are battling it out, and one is about to be eliminated! Welcome to Boulder Bay, a truly terrifying map to end a best of five on. My name's Anuki, the real one, not the clone, and settling in the west with fabrics made in blue, rebuilding France after their previous defeat, it's Marine Lord. Crossing Lake Amaya full of slaughterfish, you can cross it by boat or a scroll of acrobatics. Leading the Abyssid Dynasty dressed in the finest yellow silks, settling to the east. It's the Mister! There's a lot to digest here, but thankfully, we will likely have time to discuss it all. Boulder Bay typically starts with a fight over the waters until someone has claimed it, and then it's a battle on the land. That's just how the flow tends to go. Damn, this is a nice spot for a boar. Boars can be quite close to your starting location on Boulder Bay. However, the Abyssid Dynasty cannot harvest boars, and neither should you. Let's do a quick sieve overview. Now, it's not my intent to hype the Hulk up, but there is no doubt we will see this very strong Feudal Age ship in play. And we'll talk about that when it comes out. The Abyssid Dynasty do have 50% cheaper docks, but that won't really matter all too much. I would wager Marine Lord will eventually control the waters. Nonetheless, the Mister will try to get whatever they can and not go down without a super soaker of a fight. The Mister likely knows this. That is surely their assessment too. So they might try and develop some extra attention to harvesting land stuff. Wow, another double deer spot right next to Marine Lord. That's a lot of forest beef and aquatic beef. Boulder Bay is so rich in resources. So, uh, since much of the battle happens on water to begin with on Boulder Bay, it does naturally encourage a second town center as well. But maybe the mister will prioritize working on the land. This is such a huge forested area. Who knows though, maybe, somehow, potentially even a per chance, they'll conquer the water. I'd be eager to see that. Let's not write it off as an impossibility. I'm just trying to analyze the situation with the knowledge harbored in my skull of how this map and matchup plays out and with the skills and abilities both generals have demonstrated in this best of five so far. Once the battle takes to the land, the Abyssid Dynasty with their camels can reduce the power of cavalry. We'll keep it as simple as that for now. And so we've talked about the map, we've talked about the matchup. I want to get into the skill assessment of the players. The Mister has shown a preference for defense over offense, but only as France. In fact, all of their losses are as France, with the exception of the previous match where they were still defensive, but they won as France. Uh, they're susceptible to early game pressure, which they faced from the Mongols and the English. I think the, the thing to take away from this is give the Mister some breathing room and they can bite. Boulder Bay has plenty of breathing room. Just on land, not on water. The hulks that roam the water will no doubt be a challenge. So what about Marine Lord? The most noticeable skill they've demonstrated is their focus on micro. That micro is a strong tool in the early smaller battles as they get the most efficiency out of all of their units. Demonstrated both by their early English and Mongol attacks. Both of their losses can be attributed to resource issues. In the previous mirror match as France, it's a perfect example. The Mister managed to get a larger army and keep up with Marine Lord trying to fast castle age. Then their matches Rus, the same thing happened. Within 15 minutes, the Mister's Mongol army had outscaled both in tech and army size. Ooh, this looks like a really snuggly position for a town center between berries and gold. So, if a pattern is anything to follow, and I like patterns, taking into account civilizations, the map, and the player's strategical and tactical abilities on display, 
Actually, I'll let you come to your own conclusions. I think it's way more exciting that way. Where is this villager going, Marine Lord is asking? What do they possibly want to do up here? I wonder if it is to construct a secret dock, or at least... People like to try and make their dock secret. A load of fish are going to get wiped out as it's constructed on top of them. But... A lot of generals will just command their ships to follow the shoreline round to ensure that they're not missing out on any docks to destroy. The scout comes back, does spot it. The misters attempt to kill the scout on their own is futile. They're just too weak to do it. <laughs> Lots of boats out for Marine Lord getting the deep sea fish since it's faster. School of Cavalry is no surprise, although because of their likelihood of conquering the seas, I do wish we could see some Chamber of Commerce action, because you can generate insane amounts of gold across the water, but you also get wood from the neutral dark market. With the Chamber of Commerce as your second landmark choice, you can also switch the resource you gain from gold to wood or food or stone, while still generating a little gold too. A second town center in that sweet spot that'll go nicely with the economic wing if they get the fresh foodstuffs upgrade, which will half the cost of villagers. And it does look like they will be focusing on land. Another note that even if you don't get the School of Cavalry, you still get access to the Chivalry upgrade. I think some players think that it's an exclusive upgrade. I don't think you really gain much from the School of Cavalry unless you plan to attack early. That gold that they saved up invested into Hulk, Sprem, Spanking New, Feudal Age, Twin Rudder, Hyperweave, Linen Sail, Turbo Gloss, Mahogany, Steering Wheel, with a Grand Marble Helm. I actually know bugger all about ships, except I think they look cool in bottles. How did they get something so big into something so small? You can't buy Hulks and buy Knights, it's just economically impossible. At this stage of the game, at least. Marine Lord has no stone, which means no plans for a town center just yet. They want everything on wood and gold to get those hulks going to control the sea, secure that food, and their scout keeping an eye on the Mister's settlement just from the outside. Sees an abandoned mine. I wonder if they'll discover the second town center. Doesn't look like they are diving in deep to investigate. Marine Lord might have a couple of problems here. Firstly, they are only getting food from the sea unless they try and open up trading. And we have seen barely any trading throughout the EGC. Already some hogs getting in some attacks. Secondly, if and once they win the rights to overfish the seas, those hogs can only attack things near the coast. And they eat up for population. If the game goes on for a long time, you can have a bunch of ships doing nothing. And I didn't want to mention this just in case I was going to see some more fishing ships come out, but the Mister has kept three ships to a dock, not overly investing in fishing ships, so they can hide all of them inside the docks. Hulks, though, pretty capable of destroying docks. And as you can see, control of the sea is already going over to Marine Lord. Marine Lord just has to be careful not to overly invest in that front, since the Mister didn't either. In fact, the Mister is getting a couple of barracks. And they've collected a lot of sheep too. The best thing that the Mister can do on water is just to waste as much time and energy as possible. Ships go spin so they can fire from both sides, doubling their damage output. Or I suppose the other way to look at it is they only do half their damage if you don't spin to win them. These tiny arrow ships just stand no chance. Oh god, that boat was sentient. It literally screamed. The mister sends their martyr boats. Maybe they are trying to get Marine Lord to buy more hulks. This is a clear indication that they care not for the water. Marine Lord has a scout escorting a knight. But I'm not sure what they hope to accomplish here. Blacksmith up for the mister. Everything here looks like preparation for an attack. Maybe even in a few minutes. The Abyssid Dynasty 
don't need to research the tech for battering rams. They instantly get it in the feudal age. It's one of the reasons why they are pretty excellent at this stage of the game, the feudal age stage. And oh wow, I remember the first time this game came out. Wait, the first time? There was a was there another time it came out? What timeline am I in? <laughs> Sorry, anyway, battering ram rushes were discovered at some point early on, and they were all the rage. Everyone was falling victim to them. And, you know, it was like five eight-minute matches. And then for a short period of time, the Abyssid Dynasty was really tier S plus because of that free upgrade. Big wooden walls going down for Marine Lord. Three hulks almost finishing up a dock. The scouted Night Bros are joining up with the hulks. There isn't much they'll be able to do. The Mister has four spearmen out ready to protect the villagers. But I think Marine Lord, more than anything, just wants an escort for their scout. See what the mister is up to. The spearmen have got to be careful that they don't run in front of the hulks. I think a ballista shot from one of them is a kill shot. Oh, it is a thud in the chest. The mister isn't too far away from the culture wing, which means they could get access to preservation of knowledge, which reduces research costs by 30%, or medical sensors, which heals near keeps, which I have never seen used. You do have to research these things, though. It takes a minute, costs a fraction of resources. Sometimes, though, well, actually, a lot of times, commanders just tend to skip these upgrades entirely. More walls going down for Marine Lord, locking themselves in. They feel the same way, and attack on land is soon. Was there any need to kill the boar? Gotta get those priorities straight. But who says Marine Lord can't kill balls and build up their defenses at the same time? Uh, this is where the challenge is going to be for Marine Lord. They've already spent over a thousand gold on boats, which probably aren't going to have any further purpose in this battle. Meanwhile, we've got barracks going down in the corner and spring elves being built. This is where I would say it's imperative to reclaim that gold through their exclusive trade rights to the neutral dock market. But that's a payoff in five minutes time. If they started now, Marine Lord strikes with their army, a single knight, <laughs> three spears is the exact number. The answer in a math textbook that they needed. The crowd goes wild, five barracks in total for the mister. Battering Ram also in the works. That attack is happening very soon. Quite the panic over here. Sweaty Palms as Marine Lord rushes to get those production buildings going. They have some resources to start getting units out, but they're already at the disadvantage. The benefits of Castle Age 2 will trail behind the Mister. And the battering ram moves up through the stealth forest to start knocking on the palisade wall. And we're finally going to see how much damage a battering ram can do to a wooden wall. There's some more villagers here, ready with wood in their hand. Let's see the plan. They're gonna construct, in fact, a barracks, changing it out for the stables. Likely more men-at-arms. That's great because men-at-arms are fine at walking through the streets of the enemy. Spears get hurt by town centers and archers. There isn't any solid counter to men-at-arms that Marine Lord can feasibly bring. They did get to the Castle Age, so it'll have to be men-at-arms versus men-at-arms. They can't get crossbows because, well, for one, they got four barracks, but they still need some way of dealing with the battering rams. Whilst that all goes on, though, there's going to be these spring elves chipping away at whoever is unfortunate enough to be chosen for a bolt of steel-tip wooden lightning. The legendary yellow raiders are here and they'll bash your house down, which is not bad for a target because most top players don't overinvest in houses. It's safe to assume Marine Lord is within 10, 20 max population cap. Knocking down a house puts them over and stops units from popping out. So, I mean, it's just a guess for the mister as to whether it'll help or not. And they're correct, it does in this case. They've also freed up some space, less choke points, more room for units to move around. Marine Lord will rush to get some houses so they can continue building up their garrison in such a tiny army, stunted in growth. Meanwhile, the mister keeps adding to theirs. The town center is under siege. General Marine Lord screaming to the soldiers. Hold! Hold! <laughs> <laughs> the only thing these men will be holding is the ballista bolt 
wedged in their stomach, clenching onto it with blooded hands, writhing in agony. The mister does pull back. They'll want a clean engagement, not around the buildings. They want a wall in front of the Spring Elves more than anything. Great tactical clairvoyance demonstrated by the mister. I'm actually going to shut up now for a moment so we can just enjoy the ambience of war. Defenses dwindle. That's the work of six spring elves. Untouched by the so called Lord of Marines. I would say hope has been lost. The data we discussed at the start of the match all added up as expected. The Mister foregoed the acquisition of water resources and seized the moment for a well timed assault. Not allowing Marine Lord to assemble a land defense. France's great hulking strength turned against them, and the white flag is raised. France suffers defeat for the last time in this best of five. The Mister is going through to the semi finals with this victory. The competition is really heating up now, and I can't dawdle. There's more matches to analyze. I hope you'll join me and come along to the Ironcast Discord. For now, though, my name's Anuki. I'll see you soon. <laughs>